<laughs> I was reading an email and time almost got away from me there. Anyway, this will be my third video of the day. <laughs> Not because I planned it that way, but, uh, well, when I read the blurb, you'll understand. Uh, I recorded my first video this morning. I don't even know. Let me see what the title was of that. <laughs> it's been so long ago. I forget Mother Nature's other primary healing remedy. And then I recorded one called True Vision of Peace Team Answers Questions. And that was, of course, a group video with starting out with three of us and ending up with five of us. Uh, and the one that I'm doing right now, and this will probably go up March 12th, and it'll be uh, it'll that'll be for March 12th, but it'll go up on March the 11th uh, at five o'clock Eastern Time. Anyway, the title is Ron Speaks from the Heart about what's happening. I may as well get up and record this video since the subject matter is heavily on my mind, preventing me from sleeping. I'm not going to talk about my health issues so much as I am going to talk about our world and what I am sensing. Bear in mind that everything I think, feel, and say is run through the filters of my own experience, whether spiritual or physical. I use no crystal ball and I damn well hope I'm no longer gullible enough to believe what anyone says just because they say it, no matter who they are. As the ambassador rightly says, don't believe what we say, believe what we do. Indeed, this has been weighing on my heart for a few days. Uh, it began uh, when I received an email from a lady who I thought I knew who exactly she was, but then I wasn't so sure. Uh, I know the first name, but the last name didn't jive when I mentioned it to uh, to another individual. And so I'm not sure the relationship that I have to this woman and uh, how she entered into the picture. I'm not exactly positive of that. In any case, uh, she had t attended the uh, workshop that Gwen put on where the ambassador answered uh, some questions on the Q&A session. Uh, and she was concerned about certain aspects, uh, the relationship of 501c3s of nonprofit organizations to the IRS that, were, that was taught in the workshop. And also that the funding was to be made at, payable as loans or not interest loans, but loans to be paid back in three years and uh, that 51% of the project was to be retained, ownership was to be retained by the lender. Um, and she was concerned about those elements. And when I first heard about them, I went through the roof, quite honestly. Those of you that remember my interview with Mr. Sugi uh, back a, couple, a year ago, uh, over a year ago, or about, or about a year ago probably, when he said that they had uh, made an agreement to pay some trillion amount of trillion of dollars to the IRS through Swiss Indo, I mean, I the bottom fell out for me because I don't deal with the IRS. I mean, it, to me, that's part of the criminal system of the world. It is. It has no lawful validity in my mind though it certainly has legal validity in the day-to-day -day functioning of our world as long as the cabal and the corporate governments remain empowered, which they still are. And that's a reality that I have to admit whether I want to admit it or not. It's something that we have to face. Our world is being run by insane people, by psychopaths and sociopaths, whose agenda is to amass control of the world's resources, including its people, and to enslave its people to do its bidding uh, without as much without interference as they can possibly manage to create. And it's not a benevolent agenda, it's a malevolent agenda. And anybody that doesn't believe that, hasn't done their homework, hasn't done any research, 
They're simply buying into the programming of the matrix that is put forth in our education system, our media, and everywhere we look in every, in every nook and corner of the matrix, you're going to find a message that is basically a lie. It's not intended to be anything other than what they want you to believe. They want us to believe because it's about power and control. It's not about freedom. It's not about personal liberty or sovereignty. It's not about personal growth. It's not about awakening. It's not about any of the things that that I'm about. Now I said in the blurb that everything that I think, uh, feel, and say is a result of what I've experienced. As a young boy, I experienced what I believed and what I still believe was God. Yes, I was brainwashed as a fundamentalist Christianity. Yes, Christian. Yes, I was uh, programmed to look for a savior, to, to believe that somebody else had to do something for me. That's the programming that I was in. And I've moved beyond some of that programming. I haven't moved beyond it all. I'd still like to see someone strong bring the powers that have corrupted the earth into checkmate, cornering them so that they can no longer operate the slavery system, the financial tyranny that's been going on far, far too long on planet earth. I'd like to see that happen and I'm not going to lie to you. That's part behind everything that I think, say and do, feel that image of a savior still is there. Now that may be wishful thinking. I've called it wishful thinking in some of my videos, but I'd still like God, as you will, to help us because I don't see humanity changing by any incremental step-by-step -step program as long as the powers that have been continue to be the powers that be. I don't see how it's possible to unbrainwash the brainwashed. I don't see how it's possible to remove the control mechanisms that have been so carefully embedded in the human psyche of the culture, East and West, for as long as it's, ha as long as it's been going on. There needs to be some kind of a dramatic shift that enables us to see the bigger picture, connect the dots, and understand what's going on. Now, when I first got the email that I that I mentioned, uh, I not immediately, but uh, within a day, I contacted the ambassador, and uh, he he was going to do a video with me, and I wanted to interview him. I wanted to question him on the validity of these questions. Now, he did what he almost always does, which he said. That ignorant person, that ignorant woman, what does she know? Why are you even taking time to answer her? I don't like that kind of response. And I'll be really blunt with you. I don't like when someone asks what to me are valid questions. I don't like them referred to as that ignorant person because they don't see what I'm wanting them to see. That's not ignorance. That's simply another point of view another perspective. Now that's going to come across as criticizing the ambassador. I love the ambassador. He's going through some similar symptoms as I am, plus some more. He's being challenged in health matters just as I am being challenged in health matters. I have maintained an almost daily contact with him since April of last year and I've gotten to know him very well. I believe he has a heart for truth I believe he wants to liberate humanity. I believe he, he's willing to do whatever he personally can do to make that happen. That's how I see the ambassador. I don't see him as a shyster trying to trick people, trying to con people into anything. I see him as someone who cares. He cares especially, as I do, for the underdogs that have been most beaten down and most enslaved in our culture of psychopathy and he wants to do something about it. 
He's not the same as me. He's a different personality than I have, but he has a heart of integrity as I understand hearts of integrity. That doesn't mean that I always agree with him. I want you to understand that, and he knows that very well. I don't, I mean, yes, yeah, some people come across as really ignorant. I mean, some of the things that they that they say are, are not just points of view to me. They are stupid points of view. <laughs> and so I'm doing the same thing that I'm criticizing him of doing. And, and I do have that tendency. But when, when he's saying someone is ignorant, that's asking the same questions that I've asked. I don't consider that ignorance. I consider it a valid question. And it, which is the case here. Now, in talking with the ambassador and in talking with Gwen and, and creating the video that we created earlier today, uh, I think that the answers provided were very, very good. Uh, I, I could see the other point of view. I could understand why Gwen is covering her ass and, and helping to prevent people from uh, from being accused and perhaps even imprisoned or fined by the government for not including the proper channels of 501c3 and IRS, etc. Now the other thing, of course, that bothered me, and I got to go back a little bit on this, well, let's go all the way back to Rusa. I still believe in the goal of Rusa to reestablish the Republic, not only in the United States, but a Republic form of government all over the planet where the government is responsive to the people and the people hold the power and the reins of government and have the power of, uh, of creating, uh, what do you call it, courts. Um, Hmm. I forget the terminology, but the people have the power to create those courts that are above the government, to bring the government into check. I still believe in those principles, uh, grand juries, the principle of the grand jury. And I still believe in the principle of the OPPT, which came after that. I still believe that all certainly all major corporations around the world are operating without accountability and fraudulently and therefore all of their wealth is fraudulently gained and belongs to the people that were uh, that were robbed because it is a human slavery system the wealth created by the corporations does not belong to the people that have run the corporations fraudulently. It belongs to the people from whom it was stolen. That's a principle that I believe in. The ambassador and I have a little bit different opinion there. He thinks that, that these people worked for that money, and so it's theirs. No, you can't gain anything by fraud, and it remains yours. Fraud not makes everything you've worked for null and void because you cannot build a legitimate legitimate value based on fraudulent enterprise. It just doesn't work that way. And I believe in the kingdom of God, sky, earth. I don't believe that, I don't believe we need titles. I don't believe we need titles of nobility and, and things like were, were happening in Swiss Indo. But I do believe that somehow God needs to establish a kingdom here on earth that liberates the creation, not just humanity, but all of the creation, so that the abusers of creation can no longer wantonly abuse without accountability and without taking responsibility for their actions. I believe these are principles carved in the fleshy tables of my heart that God would write his law in me, on my heart, and, and I wouldn't need to go around telling everybody to know God because everybody's going to know God. It's the fulfillment of a new covenant that I still believe in.
that comes out of my past, but it's something that I think is foundational for, for where I am and for why I serve the way that I do. Day in and day out, whether I feel up or feel down, I continue to do my best to raise a standard of integrity so that we can co-create together a world that works for everybody. It's not an easy task. I recognize that. I recognize that the vision of true peace, that th these are souls, a small grouping of souls, uh, that are committed to making something work, that to making this thing work. Do I believe that this group can accomplish what they what they want to accomplish? Or is it just good intention? I don't really know the answer to that. My guess would be that we don't have the ability to bring to pass what we want to bring to pass. But I hope to God that I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to be mistaken. I want to see the groundwork laid so that people can, can begin to be accountable and to begin to take responsibility for creating structures that will empower and enrich humanity. I no longer believe, as I once did, that handing out a million dollars to everybody, and that's just a, a, a round number, it doesn't really mean anything, <coughs> but making everybody a millionaire, I don't believe that that would do anything but destroy the culture of humanity. I do believe it has to be a process and it has to be a step-by-step -step process of educating people to the point where they understand and are willing to take responsibility for handling gifts. But it's really gifting back to us our birthright. Yes, that's what I still believe. The, the, the inheritance of the planet belongs to the people of the planet. I believe that. We are a royal priesthood. We are divine children, sons and daughters of a living God who is omnipotent and omnipresent, though sometimes seems quite the opposite, sometimes seems quite unwilling to lift a finger and do anything that would actually help. And I'm not even sure I know anymore what will actually help. I don't think it's handing out money. I do think it's education, how that education occurs that enables us to connect the dots and to uh, see from a, a higher perspective, whatever that takes, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like or how it's going to play out. But that's what I want and that's what I look for. And I think that the group today did an excellent job of explaining what is right now. And I, and I wish them Godspeed with all my heart. And I will do whatever I can do, but I've, I've learned through this physical physical ailment that I'm battling and that I'm dealing with, I've learned that I have to take care of myself first or otherwise I'm not going to be of any value to anyone in trying to change the world. So I wanted to share these things with you because they're heavily on my mind. And I want you to know where I stand. And I really pray that each of us will learn to look in the mirror, to look inside of ourselves, to see the motives that are driving us and properly identify them, whether it's greed, whether it's fear, uh, whether it's uh, lust for power, whatever it might be, whatever the driving motivation is behind us, we need to see that motivation, call it what it is, and then say, does this serve me? And does it serve the highest good? And we need to answer that question. And if it doesn't serve the highest good, we need to make new choices to do that, which is going to be sustainable ultimately. We need to uncover our own psychopathy, our own sickness, and we need to heal and become whole, recognizing that each of us is connected to a larger web of life and that none of us are separate from that web. None of us, whether we're rich or poor, whether we're white or black or brown or whatever color we might be, whatever religion we might have, whatever uh, cultural things may separate us, we ultimately are all cut 
from the fabric of life itself. And we're, we all belong to one another. We're dependent, or where I should say, we're independent, interdependent beings. We're independent in that we're sovereign. Each of us has individual sovereignty. But that sovereignty ends where the next person's sovereignty begins, and we need to take responsibility for lifting one another up, helping each other to be the best we can be, and encouraging each other to explore deeper and deeper and deeper, higher and higher and higher, till we are able to transcend the limitations that have been burdened and placed upon us uh, for so far too long in the matrix so that we can do what needs to be done and we can create what needs to be created to make life better for all of us. I hope this makes sense to you and I thank you for listening. Namaste.